Hey guys, it's Celestia, and I made two relatively positive videos this month. I made my quota. Now it's time for me to get back to ranting about stuff that sucks, because quite frankly, it's a lot easier to find than stuff that doesn't. In fact, the topic of today's video, art roasting, is a prime example of that. It's hard to find quality video content in the art community online, which you probably know very well if you're settling on watching a video from my channel, but it's a hell of a lot easier to find low effort, toxic, childish, and potentially even harmful art roast videos, which have effectively inundated and dominated the entire art community and made themselves impossible to ignore. So today, I'm going to be going over the problems with those art roast videos, because especially after asking you guys for your thoughts on them over on Twitter and seeing the overwhelmingly negative responses, it's come to my attention that I'm far from the only one who sees how many of those problems there actually are. But before we get into all that, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Notion. This is another cool moment where I get to work with a sponsor whose platform I was already using before they reached out, so I'm really excited. Notion is an online connected workplace where you can compile all of your tasks, resources, notes, schedules, and so much more in one place, where you can not only organize them into streamlined, easily edited and viewed templates, but also share them with your entire team and let them edit them too. I've used Notion to work with my team at my marketing day job for a while now, so I already knew how effective it was in a professional setting, but after recently taking a course on using Notion to manage creative projects, I realized that it's perfect for individual artists and creators too. I'm usually working on upwards of 15 ongoing projects, and that means like upwards of 70 tasks that need doing across all of those projects within a limited amount of time, all with different deadlines. It's incredibly difficult to keep track of them all and get them done in time, and that's something that I think a lot of artists, professionals, and hobbyists alike struggle with as well. Whether it's keeping track of commissions, or works in progress, or just remembering remembering and organizing ideas before we forget them. Our brains are just too crowded to keep track of it all on our own. But using Notion's Projects tab, I'm able to do just that. My ideas, videos, speed paints, comic chapters, and so on can all be created as individual projects and organized into customizable categories like completed, in progress, not started, and so on. Each project can be open to store more information about them, like the tasks that need to be completed in order to finish them. And tasks too can be created via the Tasks tab, at which point you can do what I do and organize them into the calendar view to see when they all need to be done by. And once you've finally gotten your mess of a life together on your Notion team space, you can share that with anyone you want. Members of your creative team, friends you're working on projects with, art groups, it doesn't matter. That way they can actively contribute to the same projects that you're working on and have access to all of the information that they need to be able to do so. Since working with Notion, I've finally managed to get a good grip on my YouTube posting schedule, as well as my own personal work schedule, something that I've failed to do with every other platform or strategy that I've ever used. It's for professionals and hobbyists, for teams with huge creative projects, and artists with too many ideas, it's for anyone. With their versatile organization templates and viewing options working alongside Notion AI to help streamline your editing process, Notion is the best tool I know to boost productivity. And you can find out why yourselves by getting started for free via the link in the description and the pinned comment below. Please click that and find out how to boost your creativity and productivity and keep all of your ideas in one place, because it truly is a lifesaver. Thank you so much to Notion for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get into it. All right, so what is an art roast video? Well, I'm sure at least like 95% of you already know if you're watching my channel because my channel is part of the art community and art roasts make up at least half of that community at this point. But for the 5% of you that don't, art roasts are videos in which viewers of popular art channels submit their work, usually via hashtag, to be reviewed by that channel in the newest episode of what's usually a long ongoing series in which they do the same for many, many other artists. And I say reviewed because for the most part, I don't think most of these art roasts either roast or critique by definition at all. A roast is a comedy act where one individual is voluntarily subjected to well-meaning jokes at their expense by their friends, or at least peers who they respect and are respected by. The internet has, as they do, taken the term for themselves and used it to apply to just insulting anyone ever at any given moment. But the original definition was quite strict in requiring the insultee's consent. In that regard, the vast majority of these art roast videos, at least on YouTube, do meet that requirement. They don't review the art of random strangers without asking for their permission, they review the art of informed viewers who submitted their work for that purpose. But it's a very different dynamic in all other regards. It's not a person being subjected to a series of well-meaning jokes at their expense by people that they know and respect, it's a person being subjected to the dubiously intentioned jokes of influencers with huge platforms and dollars to be made on the backs of those jokes.
jokes, and then the subsequent mockery from their massive followings of other strangers with similarly dubious intentions and very, very little respect. Yes, they do consent to that when they submit it, but right now we're not talking about whether or not that means they're still harmful or not based on that consent alone. We're just establishing what an art roast technically is, and addressing the fact that by widely accepted definition, a roast is something that's categorized by an even playing field without a power dynamic between the roastee and the roaster, and a basis of mutual respect between them. And since that just isn't present at all in these art roast videos, I don't know if I would really consider what they're doing to the submitted art to be roasting it. Conversely, these videos have also been generously described as critiquing their submissions, and I'm similarly unconvinced that that terminology is appropriate. For the most part, these videos consist much less of actual advice given respectfully and constructively, and more just bashing and mocking any art they consider bad. Some series are pretty unapologetic about that, in fairness. Kuleen's art roasting series doesn't even pretend to offer any useful advice or educational value, but is pretty openly just meant to make fun of all the art that's submitted. At the very least, that's honest. It's not marketed as if it's supposed to be serious or helpful, it's marketed as entertaining at the expense of anyone whose art was submitted and chosen. Whether or not that kind of content has its own place or not is something I obviously can't say, but we'll come back to discuss later nonetheless. If nothing else though, it's not pretending to be more than it is. Other series though do, at least in my opinion. There are plenty of art roast series like those by Sam Does Arts and Alicia Nye that are sold to viewers not just as making fun of the art that's submitted, but as offering genuinely helpful advice to help the artists who submit it to fix their mistakes. They're supposed to be both funny and educational, and to a degree, I guess they are. But even in the best cases like Sam and Alicia, while they do sometimes provide useful feedback, it's still at the expense of the artist who submitted their work, and not with respect to them. At least in the vast majority of cases, their helpful feedback is only given after a dramatic zoom-in on the artist's most obvious mistake, a zoom-in on the roaster's exaggerated, shocked expression because they just can't believe that any artist could ever be bad enough at art to make it, and them spending 30 plus seconds saying, oh my god, what is that monstrosity? That's unforgivable! What am I even looking at? They do often eventually provide some degree of feedback that could be productive for the artist to hear and implement, but only after making every cheap joke in the book at their expense. Again, I understand that they do submit their work knowing that this is how these creators are inclined to treat it, so it's not like they're not ostensibly prepared for the fact that these jokes will be made. I get that, but in my opinion, the manner in which the jokes are delivered is often so cheap, lazy, low effort, and easy that they cheapen the significance of the critique itself and rarely offer anything funnier than haha art bad, relying entirely on their audiences laughing at the mistakes of beginners more so than their own comedy. That is just my opinion, of course, but as a result, I'm inclined to say that even at the best of times, these videos really don't offer proper critique. Critique is something that, like roasts, requires mutual respect between all parties involved, and I very rarely see any of the artists featured in these videos being treated with much respect at all. But that's only one problem I have with this content being referred to as critique. We'll get to the rest later, once we're out of this stupidly long intro. So suffice this all to say that if you've seen one art roast video, you've pretty much seen them all. There's a handful of submissions from artists of vaguely varying but mostly fairly amateurish skill levels, a YouTuber mocking their work for two to three minutes before sometimes offering some often rudely delivered but still mostly helpful advice on how to fix their mistakes, and then moving on to the next one. And with all of that explanation out of the way, I'm sure that you can tell from that alone that my opinion on art roasts isn't exactly a favorable one. That is, after all, the entire reason I'm making this video. In my opinion, art roasts are cheap cash grabs designed to get lots of views fast at the expense of the beginner artists that they borderline bully, and the jokes they make about them are increasingly low effort, crass, rude, and even sometimes cruel, so they can get as many laughs as they can with as little work needed as possible. And that's really just the beginning. There are a multitude of ways these videos are negatively influencing not just the artists being roasted, but the art community as a whole, and I'm gonna get into them all today, at least all of the ones that I'm aware of. But to be as fair as possible to art roasts, I do first want to give them credit where credit is due. Most notably, they don't roast just anyone's work. They're not out here picking art at random without the artist's consent and tearing it to pieces. Art roast videos are a lot of things, but they aren't unsolicited critique. At least the ones I'm talking about aren't. There very well may be art roast videos that do mock art without the artist's consent, but I haven't seen any myself. Not on YouTube, anyway. The popularization of art roast videos on YouTube has led to a lot of similar videos on TikTok that seem to care a lot less about whether or not the artist consented to having their work roasted, which is a problem of its own that I'll get into later. But at least on YouTube, the vast majority of art roast videos consist primarily, if not exclusively, of art that was submitted voluntarily by informed viewers who knew what to expect if their work was featured. As such, I want to make it abundantly clear that I'm not claiming that the roasters making these videos are deliberately harming the artists who submit their work, nor that the artists who submit their work are somehow victims in this scenario. If they post their art in a roast me hashtag after seeing the harshness of one of those roast videos firsthand and knowing full well what to expect 
from being included in one, and are still offended by what's said about their art in one, that's not on the roaster. All they did was insult the person's art like they insult all art, which the artist should have been prepared for. If they weren't, and were subsequently offended or hurt, they really have no one to blame for that but themselves, and I don't mean to suggest that the roasters are responsible for that in any capacity. Similarly, before I get into the problems that these videos cause, I'd also like to acknowledge in their defense that they do, arguably, have their place, so long as they know it and stay in their lane. What I mean is that art roast videos, for the most part, aren't made to be educational. They're made to be entertaining. And they're entertaining not because they're particularly clever or witty or well scripted, but because they're grabbing the low hanging fruit and making fun of beginner artists. And you know what? Fine. That's the case for all comedy. It's a scale with everything from witty, well executed jokes and bits to fart jokes a nine year old could make. Just watch 10 episodes of Game Grumps and you'll have heard everything from one extreme to the other. Art entertainment is no different. If you find it funny to watch the same art roast channel zoom in on a poorly drawn hand like it's the first time they've ever seen an art mistake so unbelievably egregious over and over again, I'm in no position to tell you that you're wrong to. Everyone enjoys different types of humor, and especially with younger audiences, art roast videos, even if they're not to my taste, do have comedic appeal and entertainment value. And so long as they're marketed as just that, videos made to entertain, not to educate, I can understand why they have their place in the art community. Because people like laughing at art they think is bad. And if artists are voluntarily submitting their work to effectively have it laughed at, then at least on the most basic level, no one is being hurt. And art roasts are well within their rights to exist as whatever form of lowbrow art comedy they are. I would still argue that mocking beginner artists being popularized as a form of comedy isn't necessarily a development I would consider positive, but I'll get into the many ways it contributes to a toxic standard of behavior in the art community later on. First, I want to focus on the problems that arise when they're not treated as entertainment, but as genuinely constructive educational content. Again, as I've already mentioned, there is usually some amount of legitimately helpful advice given in these videos. Most of them do try to constructively explain how the artist who submitted their work can fix their mistakes that they just savagely roasted. I'm not saying they're completely devoid of anything educational, but what I am saying is that being educational is not the actual purpose or focus of the video. Entertainment is the first and foremost priority, and as a result, anything educational is treated as more of an afterthought than anything else. And as I said, that's perfectly fine if the videos are treated as funny entertainment with a side of helpful advice, but it becomes more of a problem if they're treated as if they're legitimate forms of educational content to grow and learn from. You might argue that most people have the common sense required to realize that that's not what they are, but it's important to keep in mind that a lot of the people watching these videos are pretty young and impressionable. A lot of them are kids who are just getting into art and aren't yet familiar with the practice of giving and receiving proper critique, and don't have the experience yet to realize that saying, haha, you suck at hands, draw better hands, isn't that. Mistakes in real critiques are supposed to be learning moments, not punchlines. As a result, though, art roast videos are gradually coming to be seen as synonymous with actual critiques. Just critiques presented in a funny way. If you consider dragging beginner artists for five minutes before finally giving them a shred of useful feedback, a funny way. This is a problem for a multitude of reasons. First, actual constructive critique between two mutually respectful artists is being viewed as if it's the same in terms of both value and definition as an influencer mocking a small beginner artist to a massive audience for money, which both devalues the former and gives false legitimacy to the latter. Second, the false equivalency between the terms critique and roast is contributing to some alarming trends within the art community. Because critiques and roasts are effectively viewed as the same thing, artists will just insult each other's work, like they see these roasters doing, and either genuinely believe that they're offering them helpful critique, or will deliberately and knowingly use the term critique as an excuse to justify bullying, mocking, and attacking other artists because it's so normalized to do so. And as I mentioned before, while YouTube-based art roast videos do generally require artists to actually submit their work and subsequently consent to it being roasted, the younger audiences and creators on TikTok don't always or even often follow those same standards. I did a video about the TikTok art community's dark side a while ago, linked in the iCard above, in which I mentioned that unsolicited critique is something that's growing more and more prevalent there, with artists feeling entitled to give feedback on their peers' work without ever having been asked to. That feedback usually varies on a scale of actually helpful to just straight up an insult hidden behind the excuse of critique. But regardless of where it falls, it wasn't asked for. So myself and many others agree that it shouldn't just be given anyway, regardless of its quality or validity. I personally believe that this tendency towards giving unsolicited critique, combined with the increasingly accepted belief that art roasts are the same as critique, has led to a trend of artists demolishing each other's work under the guise of it being productive, helpful, entertaining, and an overall harmless practice. And I'm seeing more and more people respond to artists taking an issue with that by saying, it's just a critique, learn to accept criticism, or don't be so sensitive, learn to take a joke. After 
having their work torn to shreds by a stranger to an audience of other strangers that are often just as cruel. And to be fair, I don't think the art YouTubers who make art roast videos should be held responsible for the fact that their content may be influencing others this way. I genuinely believe that most of them are well-intentioned enough, and would be the first to condemn others for roasting the work of non-consenting artists. But it's still nonetheless my opinion that their content does contribute to this trend, whether they intend it to or not, and it's disheartening to see either way. It's also worth mentioning that the whole trend of roasting beginner art contributes in no small way to the rising acceptance and popularity of cringe culture, where all art that doesn't meet a certain standard of quality or utilize a mainstream style is looked down upon, mocked, and called cringe. I would say that the creators making these videos are once again not necessarily responsible for that because they can't control how their content influences others, but so many of them literally title their videos roasting your cringe art that I can't really give them that benefit of the doubt here. So many of them are actively capitalizing on cringe culture's prevalence in the art community and subsequently worsening the problem by normalizing the trend of mocking quote-unquote bad art by calling it cringe. The consequences of which I've gone over in more detail already in the video linked in the iCard above. So many of these art roast videos are strikingly similar to the art equivalent of cringe compilations, which speaks volumes to the actual substance of the content. Now, I've mentioned several times now in passing that these videos target beginners in particular, and I want to take a moment now to mention why that's a problem for quite a few different reasons. I can't objectively say that art roast videos only pick beginner artists to roast, because I have seen a few myself that do have at least some variety when it comes to the skill levels of the artists featured. But let's be real, art roast videos are supposed to be funny, and when making fun of art is the only real thing about it that's funny, the roaster is going to be heavily reliant on the art in question being blatantly and obviously flawed. If the viewer can't see and recognize the mistakes right away without them needing to be explained to them, it's a lot harder to make that funny and entertaining enough to keep their attention. It's really easy to say, oh my god, that foot is a crime against humanity because this obviously beginner artist drew it with toes the size of fingers, and make people laugh at that. It's a lot harder to turn their use of simplified shapes in some areas and complex shapes in others creates an uncanny appearance that isn't cohesive and breaks immersion into a punchline. As a result, the vast majority of artists featured in Art Roast videos are beginners, despite the fact that many of the submissions to these series are from mediocre to advanced artists, too. Because the jokes are the priority, and beginner art makes for the easiest jokes. This contributes to two major problems. One, it furthers the already far too prevalent belief that beginner art warrants mockery and derision just by way of it being beginner art, something that leads to many beginner artists feeling anxious and insecure about posting their art online, because it's basically an inevitability these days for someone to comment something nasty about it. People feel almost entitled to insult beginner art, as if it's the artist's fault for not being good enough not to have that insult be warranted. And while, again, this isn't necessarily an outcome that art roasters intended for or are responsible for, it is an outcome that they are contributing to nonetheless. The second problem is that the advice they do eventually end up giving quickly reaches a limit on its helpfulness. If the only art you quote unquote roast or critique is beginner art, the only advice you'll ever end up giving will be very simple, obvious, and repetitive. There are only so many times you can say, you draw bad hands, here's how to draw good hands. Beginners make a lot of the same basic and easily caught mistakes, and you can only correct those mistakes so many times before you end up giving the same advice over and over again. Like I said, once you've seen one art roast video, you've basically seen them all. The advice that's given is the same over and over again for the most part, because they only pick art that's got obvious errors that can be easily and comedically mocked and fixed, and they rarely branch out into critiquing more advanced art with more nuanced errors that require more thorough explanation to correct. So yes, if you're a beginner, you might end up gleaning something helpful from submitting your art to an art roast or even just watching one, because the concepts that they choose to focus on and explain are almost always very simple and easily explained. But there will quickly come a point where you advance past finding absolutely anything of value in them, because you'll already have learned from the mistakes that they're still correcting over and over again. There's only so much to be learned from watching a professional artist fix a 12-year-old's facial anatomy in a slightly different and new but mostly the same way for the 50th time. It would be so much more valuable if more of them corrected submissions from a variety of skill levels, so the viewers could not only stand to learn more helpful information, but also see that artists of all skill levels make mistakes that can be improved upon. But more often than not, that's just not the case, and the focus is primarily, if not exclusively, on the same range of beginner to mediocre art as always. And when they do occasionally throw in a more advanced submission, so many of them end up basically saying, okay, I'm gonna fix this to be like this and not explain why at all. So the mistakes do technically get fixed, but with absolutely no explanation as to what the problem was in the first place or why their solution to it was effective. And I understand why. It's not funny and there are no easy jokes there, so the entertainment first mindset and priorities don't allow for it. But that's all the more reason to stop viewing these videos as educational and start seeing them for what they really are. Finally, 
I'd also like to address the fact that the art roasters themselves are very frequently just not objectively correct about their criticisms or corrections. We saw that very clearly in the recent Kuleen controversy. I'm not going to go into the wider issues at play with it because that's not relevant to this point, but presumably due to her ignorance or inexperience or something, she corrected the side profile in an art piece submitted to her based on a quote-unquote side profile rule that all side profiles are supposed to look like, which was just wrong, and served to effectively teach her young and impressionable audience an art rule that was incorrect. But she's far from the only one who's done so. There are plenty of art roasters out there who correct submissions, not because they're wrong, but because they don't match the roaster's style. So many of them will openly say things like, I'm gonna change this because it looks bad, and then fix something that wasn't a mistake to suit their personal preference, acting as if the correction was an objective solution to a genuine error. I see this so much when art that's submitted is realistic but the roaster draws anime, or vice versa, where valid stylistic choices made by the roastee are slammed and demolished by the roaster as if they're actual mistakes, only to have the roaster change or erase those stylistic choices to match their own style instead. So many of these videos have fallen into the trend of non-expert artists offering oversimplified advice that is frequently flawed and inaccurate, usually just telling you how to make your style look more like theirs rather than how to make your style look better. In conclusion, all of this isn't to say that all art roast videos are bad, or that Sam Does Art's Kuleen or any other art roaster is unilaterally responsible for the toxicity resulting from the popularization of that type of content. They're making videos they have fun with for audiences that they want to have fun with it too. And while they are probably, at least to some degree, motivated by the easy views and profitability, I don't believe that they're deliberately malicious or intentionally trying to cause any harm. As far as they're concerned, they're doing exactly what their viewers presumably want, and given that people continue to constantly submit their art to them, I can't really fault them for that. But while I don't necessarily blame them for the significant increase in toxicity in the art community that's come from this art roast culture, I can't say I think their content is contributing positively in pretty much any way to it either. Yeah, I get that it's just supposed to be funny, and sometimes it can be. There's a reason a lot of people enjoy them, and even if it's not my kind of humor, I can't deny that it is exactly the kind of comedy that some people like. I'm fully prepared for a slew of comments saying, God, is there anything you won't shit on? Take a joke, they're just funny videos. Because the number of people thoroughly dedicated to missing the point apparently grows with every passing day. I get it. They're lighthearted fun. And there's a place for that, and I understand it. But when lighthearted fun has a tangible negative effect on the community as a whole, I don't think it's wrong to acknowledge that it can be two things. A well-intentioned form of comedy, and a leading contributing factor to the normalization of bullying and attacking beginner artists. I don't think it's unfair to criticize them while still acknowledging that the intention behind their continued creation is probably, for the most part, good. What the art roasters intend when making their content, however, doesn't have any bearing on the fact that it is resulting in artists with work that could be even vaguely construed as subpar, feeling insecure, demotivated, and even afraid to share it, incorrect art tips being shared as fact, and roasting becoming synonymous with critique to the latter's detriment. They may not be to blame for that, but that doesn't mean those outcomes don't warrant scrutiny. These videos have their place based on their entertainment value, and their creators are perfectly valid to make them, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't examine the negative effects resulting from them. Before I end this video, I should mention that I don't think there are no productive ways to make an art roasting video. I just think the problem is with it being presented as a roast in the first place. Naoki Saito is an amazing artist and YouTuber that I've mentioned a million times on this channel, and he regularly accepts submissions from viewers for his series where he critiques their work and fixes their errors. In these videos, he constructively breaks down the artist's piece into its strengths and weaknesses, offering uplifting and motivational compliments about the things they did well, and succinct but detailed explanations of what their mistakes were and how to fix them in the future. His advice is tailored to the individual artist, their style, and their skill level. And his advice is always helpful and delivered with nothing but positivity, completely devoid of the borderline cruel mockery typical of most art roast videos. Yeah, that utterly removes the comedy factor from the video altogether, so it's not going to get the clickbait views that come from a thumbnail screaming that it's going to roast your garbage art that you should just give up on. But it's still entertaining, performs well, and above all else, offers legitimately helpful educational insights that help artists grow and improve without taking a dump all over their work in the process. I realize that this puts it in its own category separate from art roasts, as educational content and not entertainment content. But in my opinion, I think that's an effective differentiation to make. I don't think entertainment and education benefit from being combined. I think combining art advice with a plethora of childish, low-effort insults towards the submitted art is ineffective and counterproductive. I think the insults being the primary focus leaves the advice to take a massive hit in terms of quality, and I think that normalizing, delivering advice in the form of mockery is damaging in the long term. In my opinion, if you're gonna roast art, just roast art. Don't pretend 
you're teaching anyone anything significant. I don't like Kuleen's art roasting series myself, but I can see why others might. And at the end of the day, it's not pretending to be anything more than it is. It's jokes. It's making fun of art without claiming to be offering any constructive criticism. And while I still think mocking art as a form of comedy is not awesome, I acknowledge that it has its place amongst people who enjoy that. I think that if Naoki Saito had to add comedy to his art critique videos in the form of mockery, the educational value would diminish significantly. I also think that if Kuleen were forced to provide in-depth critiques of every piece that she roasted, the entertainment value would diminish significantly. I guess I just don't see why these two genres have been combined this way, and I don't see the value in the combination when both were perfectly fine in their own lanes. But maybe that's just me. This is, after all, just an opinion piece like the majority of my videos, and I'm sure plenty of you will disagree and come to art roasting's most valorant defense. And you're more than welcome to, because I'm in no position to make any statements of fact here. I'm honestly very interested to hear what you guys think, because I'm sure this will be at least a vaguely contentious topic, and I'm curious as to why so many of you genuinely do enjoy this content, and whether or not you agree that it can, in some cases, be as harmful as it can be funny. So please let me know in the comments below. Please be respectful though, both to me, each other, and the creators mentioned in this video, because I mean absolutely no malice towards any of them and actually enjoy some of their content quite a bit. So please don't send any hate their way. That was not my point in mentioning them at all, I just wanted to offer clear examples of what I was talking about. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Special thank you as always to channel members Café Soleil, Joseph Solomon, TC Pratt, Zelda Deverack 42, King Good James, Art of Amethyst Fable, Scourge the Cat 67, and Haruki Kenway, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle L, Blue Swanson, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Alangshi, Kim Yian, Crazy Asar, Ken Tong, Grayson Xavier, MG, Blah Mage, TC Pratt, Finn, Grim Spectre, Celine Merriman, Ash, Eldritchia, The Stray Dog, Ulura, Greg Noble, Decagon, Jenny Chan, Captain Reku, Ryan M. Williams, Catbus, Alec Rinekainen, and Mac, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.